Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review of 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world by Alif Shafak. So this was published in 2019 and it was also long listed for the Booker Prize in 2019. I would call this one a contemporary novel. So this is the second book that I've read by this author. I read The Island of Missing Trees by her and I absolutely loved that book. It was definitely one of the best books that I read in 2022. So I was very much looking forward to reading some of her other books and I chose this one because I thought the premise sounded really interesting. So the the kind of idea behind the title of 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world is once someone has died their brain still has activity for a couple of minutes after their death and it has been found that in some people your brain can have activity after you have died for up to 10 minutes 38 seconds so she has based her whole novel on this kind of construct and our main character has died at the very beginning of this book. The first chapter is titled The End and she is called Layla and she is a sex worker and she has been brutally murdered and her body is just lying in the open. And then we kind of go through her memories in a way. So the idea is after you have died, if your brain is still firing, what's actually going on? And she's looking at the idea that you kind of sift through your memories in this time. So each chapter is titled um, one minute after her death, two minutes after her death. And to see these memories, she chooses like tastes and smells to kind of evoke a memory. And I thought that was such a clever way of kind of introducing new memories. I thought it was really, really, really well done. I really like the way she used the sense of taste and the sense of smell to introduce memories to the reader, because I do think those two things are very kind of evocative and do make you think about certain memories. So I thought that was really very well done. So she is born in 1947, so we kind of go back to her birth essentially and we see her parents and we look at the kind of family structure and there's quite a complex family structure um, kind of to explore with them and then we kind of go through her childhood and we see her first ever friend and how she becomes friends with him and then we just kind of move on through her life and just kind of see all the important moments in her life and we also see some of the moments that you probably wouldn't deem to be important but are kind of like what shapes her as a person so yeah I thought it was really really well done and I really enjoyed that part of it so I have given this one four stars and it is a little bit of a low four stars and I will tell you why later on because it kind of goes into spoiler territory so I don't want to tell you why right now. I'll tell you why later, um, just in case you don't want to hear any spoilers, but just to kind of tell you more about the book in general. So yes, it started with the first chapter is titled The End and we just kind of go then back in time um, until she is very, very small. So she definitely plays with time a lot in this and I really enjoyed that. I thought that bit was very well done too. And then once we have finished with, you know, minute one, minute two, minute three, and we've gone all the way to 10 minutes, 38 seconds and she is dead and we're gonna start looking at more people, we look at all of her friends. So she has five friends and we kind of look at each of their stories. We look at their backstories, how they first became to be friends with Layla and I enjoyed that part too. Now going into a little bit of spoiler territory now, um, the kind of second part of the novel um, kind of focuses more on trying to rescue Layla. So she is definitely dead and the body has been found and she has been buried. Now she's been buried and this is a real place in Turkey. She's been buried in the cemetery of the companionless and that's kind of where people go who have been kind of shunned by their families and shunned by society. So they are buried there and there's no headstones, there's no kind of names, they're just known by a number. And I think the author definitely looked at that really well. It was very interesting to see the other kind of people who are buried alongside Layla. She also does a little bit and tells you about the person to the left and the person to the right and so on. Um, but the bit I didn't enjoy quite as much is once we've kind of done with all of that and I thought it was a very poignant novel, I thought it was a very emotional kind of read just to see this whole woman's life and 
how she ended up in certain situations and kind of see, you know, the grief she's gone through and so many different things. And then looking at the backstories of all of her friends, which were all very interesting. You definitely get to know a lot about each of them. Once you're done with all of that, it's kind of the rescue mission and the friends want to basically um, dig her up and bury her somewhere else. And I just kind of didn't really like that part of the storyline as much. So I, like I said, I thought it was very poignant. I thought it was very emotive. But once we got into that part and it was basically them just kind of hurtling along on the roads and they've got like tools and a pickaxe and they drop the pickaxe and they're gonna, you know, go and like exhume her body and rebury her. I just, it got a little bit silly. I just, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't quite understand the direction that was being taken. I, I just kind of like changed the tone of the book, I would say. Um, but I was really, really enjoying it up until then. Um, so it was definitely going to be a higher kind of four star. But after all of that, it just, I felt a little bit more lukewarm towards it. I just didn't enjoy that second part as much. So I've given it more of a low four star, I would say. But I definitely think her writing is so beautiful. It definitely is as beautiful as it was in The Island of Missing Trees. Yeah, I just didn't really kind of like that ending. It was trying to make it, I don't know, it just didn't, it didn't really work for me, is what I was trying to say. I think I would have enjoyed it more had it been, uh, let's look at Layla's um, past, Let's look at all of her friends and their backstories and then maybe for the final chapters for them to be, maybe if they held like a wake for her and they all just kind of talked about her or just seeing how they went through the grieving process, perhaps, especially the one who was in love with her. Maybe we could have followed that kind of, that kind of idea. Um, so yeah, um, in comparison to the other novel I've read by her, The Island of Missing Trees, I would have to say I do like that one a lot more. I gave that one five stars. Like I say, it's one of the best books I read last year. Um, this one was good. I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's going to be, it's definitely not a new favourite for me. And I definitely do prefer The Island of Missing Trees. I think for that one, it was a lot more hard hitting. I think this one could have been hard hitting. I maybe didn't, it was the ending that kind of threw it off for me. Um, but yeah, her writing's still very beautiful and she definitely explores a lot of dark themes. And um, the majority of the book is set in Istanbul um, before when Layla was a child, she was living elsewhere, kind of more of a remote kind of place. So we're also focused in there, but mainly it's set in Istanbul. And yeah, I learned a lot about um, different parts of history that I didn't know about. So we go back in time to 1947, which is when she's born and she dies in 1990. So that's the kind of span that this book takes. And I thought it was very interesting. Obviously, she only dies when she's 43 years old. Um, I also thought, just to illustrate how beautiful some of this writing is, I would read you a couple of my favourite quotes from this book. So this one is on page 197 and it's about grief and it's one of the characters talking. So grief is a swallow, he said. One day you wake up and you think it's gone, but it's only migrated to some other place, warming its feathers. Sooner or later, it will return and perch in your heart again. I just thought that was a really wonderful kind of description of grief and I thought it was, yeah, very poetic and I really, really liked that one. One of the other quotes that I really liked is uh, this one here is kind of how you perceive someone who you love or someone that you know and it is, the boy squinted at his uncle as if the man was shrinking in front of his eyes and I thought, it was just such a brilliant sentence. I really liked it and I had to jot it down. So yeah, I do think this one is absolutely beautifully written, very similar in that respect to The Island of Missing Trees. I do think I preferred the story of The Island of Missing Trees. So if you haven't read anything by Alif Shafak, I would absolutely recommend that you read The Island of Missing Trees. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, but I really enjoyed this one too. I think it was just kind of the ending that put me off a little bit. Um, I think the other one was a stronger novel just for me overall and it definitely was more hard hitting, it was more poignant um, and I think it will stay with me more. That one had um, an interesting idea of the fig tree was an narrator in that story and this one is kind of the idea of um, going back in time and sifting through your memories once you have died. So yeah, she has some really interesting concepts and I really do like that about her stories and I'm definitely going to be reading more by this author. I'll absolutely pick up whatever she publishes next, but before that I'm definitely going to dive a little bit into her backlist. And the ones that I am interested in reading most, I think, are The Forty Rules of Love and The Three Daughters of Eve. But if you have read lots of her books, definitely let me know 
which one you think I should pick up next, either, you know, which one is your favourite, which ones do you really enjoy? So yeah, I would recommend this novel, I would recommend The Island of Missing Trees a little bit more, uh, but I still think it's good, I think it's well done, and I definitely think it has a lot of really interesting things to say, and there's definitely a lot of diversity in here, there's definitely some LGBTQ plus representation, and we also have um, some reputation of a sex worker, which I don't think is often a focus of kind of literature as your main character. And it really is looking at kind of um, the people that are kind of generally rejected by society and kind of centering them in a novel and making them the main characters, which I really liked because um, we generally don't always see that very often. So yeah, that was that one. So thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you've liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. I'll see you in my next one.